Hi, uh, Rod Kane here from the Washington Grand Company. Uh, once again, I want to talk to you about my favorite ancient medieval game, uh, Triumph. Um, and today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the tournament set up for Triumph um, and the, in the 15 millimeter uh, scale. Um, I had a question recently come up about why do we use a rectangular play mat um, or battlefield. So I thought I'd kind of cover that a little bit and also talk a little bit about Triumph as a tournament game. So uh, what you see in front of me, uh, we've kind of gone over some of the basics and the setup ones, was uh, is a typical 15 millimeter game board. Um, it's roughly two by three feet. Um, and the dimensions of the board were picked out kind of carefully, not only for the aspect of the gameplay, but for the practicality of um, presenting this game at conventions and getting together with your friends and playing a series of games as a tournament. Um, Triumph's a great tournament set of rules for playing ancient medieval games. Uh, one of the reasons I like it so much is because it's it's quick, it gives you a clean uh, uh, result, uh, it doesn't, there's not a lot of ambiguity in the rules, um, but yet it gives you a realistic feel when you're playing the game. At least that's, that's my opinion. I would encourage you to try it and find out for yourself. Um, but one of the other aspects about the tournament is the practicality of playing these games at a convention setting with a bunch of fold-out tables that are uh, in the U.S., um, standard convention size in most places in the world, they're designed around human beings and their normal sizes. So you think of your typical six to eight foot uh, long table, which is usually no more than two foot to 30 inches wide, um, you need a play surface that'll fit on that table. So in 15 millimeter, part of the reason why this mat looks like it does is one, the practicality of fitting it on the tournament table, uh, and two, you don't really want your armies to be crunched into the center of an arbitrarily small play area, but at the same time, you want to make sure your armies have the ability to maneuver and feel like it's a real battlefield. There are no edge of the world problems in a real battlefield because there's no limit theoretically to side, unless there's a piece of terrain like a coastline um, or impassable mountains. So if you look at these two armies, I have uh, uh, Mongols uh, versus post-Mongol Russians. Um, these are two armies that are filled with lots of very fast-moving mounted troops. Uh, I'm using my winter play mat, which is set up for our, our tournament size play area. And what you'll see is we don't really get into an edge of the world problem when you play a game like this because remember, once again, you have a command control issue. So the command control is generous, but it doesn't extend all the way to the edge of the board. But at the same time, even with these fast-moving troops, I can move out towards the sides of the board, but the battle's going to take place here. Camps are here. Main battle line is here. So by using this rectangular battlefield, we don't get into that issue of the edge of the world becoming a problem where the entire battle takes place over here on one side uh, of the board. It's mostly going to take place in front of you. So it's somewhat of an arbitrary mechanism using the deployment, using the camp deployment, and then the rectangular battlefield but it achieves several things. One, it gets us a really decent uh, sized mat to comfortably sit across the table and play a 15 millimeter game. By having it be longer than it is um, deep, we allow for those flank maneuvers that are going to happen with the more mobile armies and the concerns that come with it for the armies that are less mobile. Um, so it creates that realistic feel. And we don't have to deal with a lot of issues like edge of the world. What happens when my troops get too close to the edge of the world? It doesn't happen naturally in the game because as the game flows, if you have troops way out here on the flank, you know, unless they're coming in from a flank maneuver and they're fast moving, they're probably not going to play a part in the battle. So that's why we have a rectangular uh, battlefield. Um, we think it works really well for tournament play. Of course, once again, I would encourage you to do what I do with Triumph, which is re recreate the historical battles with your armies in your own basement game room or wherever you're playing at conventions um, with any size battlefield that's suitable to the battle and the number of troops that you want to represent the battle. This is our standard 48 point versus 48 point matchup. Um, it's a very comfortable, fun game to play. Um, I should point out these are um, uh, some of the figures from my collection. Most of these are uh, uh, Thistle and Rose and a mixture of other figures and uh, painted by the very talented Paul Potter. Uh, so I wanted to just drop a hey to Paul. Um, love these armies. I've got a lot of Paul's armies, and uh, I really enjoy playing with them. Um, but I encourage you to sit down and try out the rectangular battlefield from the tournament set up in the book, and I think you'll find that it fits comfortably on the table. 
allows for a great 15 millimeter game and this issue of running out of battlefield doesn't really come into play within the scope of a typical game. So once again, my, uh, the game is called Triumph. My name is Rod Kane, and uh, I really appreciate you watching these videos, and uh, we'll, we'll do some more of them. Thanks.